Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to another episode of Sabbath School in Eden, a Bible study program that is brought to you by the Eden Vale Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Garden of Eden was the first schoolroom. Adam and Eve were the first students. Nature was the first lesson book, and God himself was the first instructor. It is our hope that through these Bible study sessions, God himself will instruct you in his word. I'm joined today by a sister of mine. Uh, welcome, and please do introduce yourself. Uh, greetings, viewers. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mayford, for that um, introduction. Uh, my name is Phyllis, and I'm also a member of the Edenville Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank welcome, you. Welcome, Phyllis, and I look forward to having this study um, with you. But before we get into the study, may you please pray for us. Uh, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we want to thank you for the gift of life that you've bestowed upon us. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity to open your word, allowing mortal, sinful human beings to read and to translate your word. I pray, O Jehovah, for the presence of the Holy Spirit, that may you reveal to us the things that you want us to know. I pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And thank you for the prayer. And um, we've been studying the book of Mark. And I think today's lesson or today's okay. study is the final study uh, in this series of the Book of Mark. But that, this is not suggesting that we are done with the Book of Mark. You can always go back and study the Book of Mark for yourself. Uh, but um, in this study, we're going to focus on chapter 16 of Mark, uh, where we will be uh, discussing under the topic, uh, The Risen Lord. Um, so the, the chapters that we've studied, you know, chapter 1 to 15, we've seen a lot. We've seen Jesus performing miracles. We've uh, seen Jesus teaching. We've seen Jesus calling disciples. We've saw a lot has happened. Mm. And uh, now we're looking at, you know, the uh, closing scene of his time um, while he was here on earth. And our key text comes from Mark chapter 16, verse 6. And I'm going to read that. And it says... And he said unto them, Be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. So um, he is risen, he is not here. These are the words that um, we'll be looking at today. And um, before this happened, as Jesus was being tried and led to the cross, um, the disciples were devastated yeah. to see him uh, being led to the cross and dying, right? Uh, because they had their own expectations. Um, in your own um, uh, in your own opinion, what do you think was going through the minds of the disciples as Christ was being led to the cross and ultimately uh, dying? Yeah, you know, having gone through the study, um, I think they were justified, obviously, any kind of loss can be very devastating. Mm. And seeing someone who had performed so many miracles, whom they had walked with for such a long time, um, having to die just like that um, must have been very terrible to them as well. But um, And also, you know, remember when he resurrected and then he appeared, to them at some point, remember the two that were walking that met Jesus at some mm. point in Luke 24, where they kind of seemed to confirm the fact that they were actually waiting for a political leader. And uh, in that moment, the devastation as well might have come from that point where we anticipated um, a savior, mm. not in the sense that in the way that Christ would have expected them to perceive, but in their own way. Mm. So it, it, there's a whole mix of emotions in that time, um, even disappointment, mm. I would also assume, uh, because what they thought would have happened um, did not happen the way that they anticipated. Even may possibly they could have thought Christ himself would have saved himself in that mm. moment, having himself served other people having himself resurrected other people. So there could have been a lot of emotions going through the disciples' minds that point. And as you, as you say, as you say this, I'm also reminded of the words that one of the um, <clears throat> criminals on the cross uh, said to Jesus. Save yourself. If you are the son of God, yes. uh, save us and save yourself yes. too. Uh, so maybe the disciples did not utter these words, mm. but yeah. maybe the thought was there. 
Possibly. That if really he was the Messiah, he could have done something. I mean, we've seen him mm. do a lot of things. And I think it also comes to us. There are certain things that may not escape our lips. Yeah. But we still have that thought to say, mm. could could he still be God? Yes. Is he God really? In, in all this. So thank you for that um, um, for that uh, insight. And I'd like us to look at the, the resurrection and we find this um, in from we read from um, Luke chapter 15 and verse 42 and we read up to uh, verse uh, 6 of chapter 16. Um, won't read won't read the verses there but just the, the summer of that section of uh, scripture talks of when Jesus died, Joseph of Arimathea coming to uh, get his body for burial, yes. um, his death mm-hmm. um, before it was on the preparation day before the Sabbath, and they were rushing to ensure that all is done and dusted by the time the Sabbath the starts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know what are, what are your reflections on this uh, part of the lesson. Um, clearly, I, just looking at um, Joseph of Armate, it actually left me with a little bit more of questions. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we, we, we barely hear anything about him, but I know Ellen White does confirm that he was one of Jesus, uh, let me say, hidden disciples that were uh, somewhere. And um, the fact that he then comes right at the end of um, Jesus' life, making all this um, you know, uh, contribution, uh, taking his body and giving him the best of of, of graves, I would assume that um, Joseph was a very rich man, mm. and um, you know, and it it leaves me wondering that do we possibly at times um, have the tendency of also wanting to appear at the very end and hiding ourselves um, all along, all along, mm. yes. Okay. So it's it's just something that I found um, quite interesting, and then we as we move into chapter sixteen. We then also meet Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Salome, and all of them that are, you know, finding themselves at the right place and the right time. And as we start, I'm sure we are going to see how eventually Mary Magdalene becomes the first person to see Jesus um, being an issue of being at the right place at the right time. We mm-hmm. might want to find any other theological understandings of it, but for me, it's it's a simple um, at the right place at the right time. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the Bible is specific on the day that Jesus died. Mm-hmm. It says on preparation day. Um, what's the significance of that specifying the preparation day? Um, I suppose it also goes to helping us understand um, the sanctity of the Sabbath as well. Because if you realize and look across all the Gospels um, in the Bible, um, no one makes a mention of anything different mm. from from the Sabbath, from Matthew, Mark, Luke. Everyone mentions um, the day before um, the Sabbath, the preparation day. And I'm sure it's, it's, it's meant for us to then realize that within those three days, there was a day from the preparation day and the middle day being a Sabbath, which, um, um, you know, Jesus then rested and resurrected only on the third day. I believe there is something special that... Um, God wants us to know or to understand or to preserve as Christians. Yeah. yeah. Then, then um, which goes on to another discussion of um, there's observance of um, the resurrection day. Others do observe the resurrection day, which according to the Bible here says the first day of the week. When it was mm-hmm. the first day of the week, um, then we've got the preparation day. And in between those two days is what you referred to. It's the Sabbath. It's the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. But this, the, 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 the Bible is clear on uh, the day of ob- that is to be observed as holy and that is sanctified, sanctified mm-hmm. by God. Um, maybe we can move on to, um, there's another uh, uh, scripture that I'd like us to read. And we mm-hmm. find this in Colossians chapter 2. We'll read verse 10 to 12. Colossians chapter 2, verse 12, 10 to 12. If you find it, you can just read it. If you find it before I do. Okay. Um, Colossians chapter 2, verse from verse 10. And it says, And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Mm -hmm. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, 
who raised him from the dead. Yeah, so the memorial of Jesus' uh, resurrection, mm -hmm. not specifically the resurrection day as others would, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, fix their eyes upon, but Colossians speaks of uh, the memorial of um, Jesus' resurrection and how, how, how does the apostle put it there? So for me, basically, just trying to understand um, the whole concept on um, um, the resurrection and, um, you know, it's, it's basically the baptism that we have, um, that we go through after believing in Christ. Mm -hmm. Just as Jesus died, um, we also die um, in our, from our sins in, in the same way that Christ died, mm -hmm. through baptism, and then we resurrect um, in a similar fashion, the moment that we come out of the water, that in itself, it signifies our death from sin uh, into newness of life mm -hmm. through baptism. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 so when one is baptized, they go into the water, into the water the that signifies the grave. Yes. Uh, and as they um, come out of that water, that is, that is resurrection. Yes. So the baptism also points to the resurrection of Christ, yeah. um, us dying mm -hmm. to our old self um, and resurrecting to new life. But I also want to find out from you, what then does Jesus' resurrection mean to you as a Christian or as a person just looking at his resurrection? Uh, so personally, it gives me power over sin. Mm -hmm. um, Christ has conquered sin. He has died um, for me. And um, I have nothing to fear pretty mm. much. And, um, you know, even Paul in Romans chapter 6, he gives us, you know, a further explanation. I'll just read through. Uh, it's a little bit long, but just to give us an understanding as well. From Romans chapter 6, um, mm -hmm. from verse 1, what that says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we? Um, who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Mm. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. So I think that's the first thing for me, this newness of life that the death of Jesus, the baptism that I experience also gives me the death and his resurrection. For if we've been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves. Of sin. of sin, yes, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, profound. They coming from from Paul and coming yes. from you. Um, so, death is not the final. Like the death that everyone no. is experiencing is not the final. No, um, if we have a relationship with God and we followed Him, uh, death is not the final. Yes, uh, there is resurrection that is promised. The second coming. There yes. is the second coming where yes. everyone shall be resurrected. But thank you for that insight. And mm. um, we then uh, look at um, the events after Jesus had been buried, um, the devastation that was, um, say, in the camp. Mm. Um, the, the, the women rose up early mm. um, on the first day to go to the tomb, and we find this in uh, Mark chapter 16. Mm. Um, and it from verse 1 to verse uh, 6, we'll, we won't read it, but okay. um, this, uh, this section of the study is based on Mark chapter 16, mm -hmm. verse 1 to verse 8. So um, is the resurrection account even real? Is it real? Is it a story that's made up? And how will you convince someone that it's real, it happened? It's, it's, it's very real, as um, we've read through it. And... Um, I don't think there would have been, you know, the first thing maybe um, we we know even before Christ was buried, he he really died because we might want to assume because there have been narratives that maybe fainted from the beatings, you know, mm. there's a whole lot of things. The very first thing that is 
Christ died. And the one thing that happened when he died, Joseph Aramatia came, took the body. His mother, uh, Mary Magdalene, if I'm not wrong, they all followed to see where Christ was. Mm. So even when they came back, I don't think they would have made a mistake on um, identifying the where grave in which, where, yes, in which he was laid. So, and I don't see any reason why the disciples would have lied about his resurrection. Mm. And we, we, when we see after post his death, they, they are also in shock. They are also disappointed. They are also, you know, and if it was a lie and they would have been part of the lie, then they could have possibly been the first ones to appear um, or to claim that they have seen Christ. But we, we see in chapter 16 that actually it's the women, Mary Magdalene, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Salome, who are, who experience or who at least have insights of his resurrection. And mm. let's remember, this is a time when women were, were lower class citizens, so to speak. And mm. such a uh, an event in, in the Christian movement could have only, you know, if there was anything to benefit or to lie from it, only a man possibly could have been the one to say, I'm the first one to, to, mm. to have seen um, Jesus resurrect. So there is all the evidence that we need and um, to suggest that Jesus really did resurrect. The tomb was empty even. Mm. Yeah. yeah, the tomb was empty. Yeah. And I think it also speaks to God's creative and recreative power. Yes. Um, from nothing, God created what we see today. Yeah. Um, and um, would he then, uh, would it be then difficult for him to resurrect someone from the dead? Exactly. I guess it's something that we can also look look mm -hmm. look at, and also you know, as you mentioned, uh, the empty tomb that uh, you know people knew mm -hmm. uh, he had been laid in that tomb. We know according to the uh, Bible record that they mm -hmm. were guards that were even set up yes. to make sure that the disciples don't steal the body of Jesus. There was even a seal, I'm sure, yeah. a Roman seal, to make sure that no one comes and takes the. But there were guards even. Yeah. Mm. So it, the, all this, uh, it, it shows that mm. uh, Christ uh, resurrected. Um, and someone once said, um, the story of our salvation is incomplete. incomplete without the, the resurrection. resurrection. Yes. Um, can you unpack that for us? Yeah, I think the, the resurrection, it's the culmination, or do we say the culmination, or it's the, the, um, uh, the exciting part of it, mm. yeah, of or, or what makes let me say what, what makes Jesus who he is in our mm. lives, really. And um, if he had not resurrected, um, one point us to think, what, what would we be mm. even today? So it's, 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 it's really a turning point. I think that's the word I was, I was looking for, for Christianity. And that's the basis of, 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 our, of, hope. of our hope, yes. And even Christianity, as we know it today, our hope is in the resurrection, which even promises us the second coming of Christ, where mm. even the dead in Christ, those that we have lost um, along the way, will also be resurrected when Christ comes. So had the story ended with Jesus dying on the cross and being put in the tomb, it will only just tell us that when we die, we just that's die. the end of it. Exactly. We, but the resurrection story also tells us that yeah. we too um, can rise, can rise mm -hmm. when God when God comes. And I think this mm -hmm. is what we're all uh, looking forward to. Yes. I mean, the story can't end with all this pain and suffering that mm -hmm. we have. It has to have a good ending. Mm -hmm. And um, we can experience the good ending if we have that relationship with God True. and we are resurrected when he shall come to take mm -hmm. uh, those that have done according to his will. And to our viewers, please don't go away. We are taking a short break. Um, we'll be right back. Please engage with us in the comment section, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, this page with your loved ones. Stay tuned. Thank you for being part of our Sabo School community. We invite you to continue watching and exploring our study together. To access more of our enriching lessons and dive deeper into the teachings, simply download the adult Sabo School lessons at www.ssnet.org. Sharing this link can make a difference and potentially save a life. Join us in this journey of spiritual growth and discovery. Thank you for being part of our Sabbath School family. Welcome back, dear friends. We continue with our study. And uh, as we were um, 
finishing off uh, the previous segment, you had started talking about the woman uh, or the women that went to the tomb. Mm. And we find this in Mark chapter 16, verse 1 to 8. Mm. Maybe if you can expand your thoughts further on that. Um, so for me, uh, the one thing that struck my attention was actually in verse, um, is it way, in verse 3. And they said amongst themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? Mm-hmm. And, you know, but they didn't give up. That's the most interesting part. They were having this conversation as they were as going. As they were going, there. exactly. And realizing and uh, listening to one to one um, commentator saying this could have been two, three tons. And three women being able to push a whole two, three ton stone. I don't know how they were expecting, but there was faith in them. Um, that we also need to live by somehow. Mm-hmm. That, you know, where God has sent us, it's going to look difficult. It's going to look tough. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, we know that God is going to push or remove, let me say, those obstacles that seem very huge and very big. So I think mm-hmm. that was very striking for me, you know, as the women conversed going to um, the tomb of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so I think also just generally as a principle of life, mm-hmm. things may look difficult. Yeah. That doesn't mean we turn back. Yes, true. We, we, we so face forward, we continue to go um, just as a general pr- principle of life mm-hmm. and uh, trusting that God will roll that stone away mm-hmm. um, True. When, when we get there. And what was the first reaction of these women when they got to, to the tomb? The first thing they entered the tomb, Christ was not there. Mm. And um, that's when they witnessed the, the men, the young men, the Bible, Mark records it as a young man sitting mm. at the right side. And um, they were alarmed. But surprisingly, um, I think um, Christ himself had indicated that he would rise again. And, mm. I, you know, one uh, you know, stops to wonder if they'd been lost in translation at some point. Mm. Um, what was going on? It was um, the message that they had from Jesus himself. Was it not enough to convince them? Mm. Uh, I would have thought at that point they would have remembered oh you said he was he said going to <coughs> yes he was going yeah. to rise again and surely this is the third day but it seems until that point even then um you know later when they it says in verse 8 they went quickly and fled from the tomb mm. for they trembled and were amazed and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid yeah so while we are there i mean there are so many what does it say of us as well because there are so many bible promises where yeah. God is um, reminding us, I'm with you, do not mm, fear. Mm. Um, the women's, re- <clears throat> women's reaction after having been with Jesus, after having seen what Jesus did, after mm. having uh, heard the promise from Jesus' own mouth, mm-hmm. um, they had this fear. And what does it say of us today? I think we, we, we're still falling under the same trip, that we, 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 we kind of doubt the same word that um, we read. And... Um, even when 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 things change in our life and you know you know god appears or you know challenges that we have appear to have been uh, solved even you know you pray for the sick they they um get well we we kind of are amazed we are surprised mm. but god has promised be still and know that i am god mm. and we, we 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 i don't know where we lose it but at yeah. some point we 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 kind of lose our faith or our trust in God. But he has promised, he has said it to us over and over again from Genesis to mm. Revelation that he will be with us. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the verse that you read, um, I, think it's, <clears throat> I think it's verse verse 8, is it? Mm. Where they did not say a mm. word to anyone after mm. they'd witnessed this. Why? Why do you think they may have kept quiet? Um, I, I, for me, maybe just speaking for them, let me just speak for them specifically. Given the controversies, the issues that were behind Christ, you know, mm. the, the, the way um, he was killed and the events that had happened before, I think it became a scary issue for them to just say the man that was killed uh, two or three days ago has risen again, it would have caused a lot of issues, a lot of challenges, and they needed to be very sure mm. um, that it was very, it was true, fearing possibly that there could be issues with um, what the political powers, the Pharisees even, 
um, who had brought Jesus to to be killed. Mm. So I think it was a, a confusing moment as well. So much was going on. While it may be, it would have been an exciting moment for them realizing that the Christ that they thought was dead had actually risen. Unfortunately, it it caused nothing but um, fright on their mm. part. Yeah. yeah. And th that leads me to a next question then. How easy is it for us to tell what the Lord has done for us? Mm, interesting question. Um, it, it, it depends with where your, 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 your faith is, your trust is. Mm. It depends. Um, if you are one who believes um, in the presence of God in your life and in, you believe in, in answered prayers, it's very easy to understand that God really does answer prayers. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess somewhere along the line, um, human nature allows us to think that we are capable of our own to do some of these things. Mm. So it really takes a lot of trust and faith in God to be able to believe and trust that he can surely come through for us. Yeah. So <coughs> we have prayed, um, you have prayed, I've prayed, I'm sure mm. of yours have prayed and God has come through for us. Yeah. Um, and you can tell that this, this is the hand of God. It yes. can't be any other. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also, you know, been in um, services where there's constant, uh, you know, people are being constantly requested to come up, anyone with mm -hmm. a testimony, anyone wants to say what the Lord has done for them. But there's kind of a, a reluctance to, to walk up there. I don't know whether it's fear or whether it's that we so much doubt that it was really God who did that, who, who, who did that um, for us. And I don't know what it is. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very interesting because um, as we go through the study, there is a point where then Christ commissions his disciples to go out there. Mm. And given coming taking it on a personal note, the only way I can tell people about Christ is about a life that I have lived with that God, mm. a life that God has really um, uh, come through for me, so to speak. So if we cannot tell of what Christ has done for us, there is no way that we can tell people about this risen Savior. Mm. He's not there anymore, but mm. he lives within our lives in what we do. And what better way for us to testify about the goodness of God. So it is important that we share what God has done yes. for us. Share with the world out there. Mm. Go, you know, the, the woman at the well, all she did was to run and say, come and see the man yes, who knows who, you know, who's, who's told me everything that I've, I've mm. ever done. And um, we see Jesus now appearing yes. to, to Mary and the others. And we uh, take this from verse 9 up to verse 20 of um, Matthew chapter, uh, sorry, mm. Mark chapter 16, verse mm. 9 to verse 20. This is where these, mm. this part of this um what the lesson is coming from, mm -hmm. um, Jesus now appears to, uh, to Mary and the others. Mm -hmm. Why, is there any sig significance in Mary being the first person to see Jesus after his resurrection? I think I'll go back to what I said earlier. Mm. That she was there. She was just there. Um, whether because she was in service of a Lord, wanting to prepare his body, but at the end of the day, it's about being at the right place and the right time. Mm. Yes. So be where the GPS of heaven will locate exactly. you. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Where everyone is called to mission, make sure you are there. Mm -hmm. Where everyone is called to serve, make sure you are there. Mm. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Thanks. Thanks for that. And we also see in verse 13 here, mm -hmm. um, after you know they ran and told others um, about the risen uh, Savior, um, verse 13 says, And they went and told it unto the residue, those that remained. Um, neither believed they them. Mm -hmm. So they were um, they were not believed. And um, why do you think they did not believe these women? It's women. It's women. <laughs> Let me say, remember earlier we spoke about how, you know, women are, always considered, like we're considered second-class citizens, but maybe not. You know, I just want to draw you back maybe mm. to, to Mark. You know, when Mark starts uh, chapter 16, he makes mention of the three women. Mm -hmm. But when you come to verse 9, he then goes on to 
um, talk about Mary Magdalene out of whom he had cast seven demons. Mm. There is something possibly about Mary Magdalene which could have influenced what happens in verse 13. Mm-hmm. Is it first? Yes. And they went and told it to the others, but they did not believe them either. Here is Mary Magdalene, and with the history that the disciples knew, um, whatever her life had been like mm-hmm. back then. And it was very easy for them, possibly not to trust her, um, possibly not to believe what she has said, and which is um, um, something that we also even fall into nowadays, mistakes that we make, because we've known so much about someone. Um, to a point where even if they bring good news, even if they bring something that could be of benefit to us, mm-hmm. we are very quick to to dismiss, to judge, and to think what good can come from um, the mouth of someone that we've known as Mary Magdalene. So I, I, I suppose that could have also been the reason why they didn't believe. And, um, and something like that as well, you know, it could have been an event that could have been um, the privilege of the who's who of society, of mm. the disciples themselves who had walked with Christ yes, for yeah. three years and uh, possibly coming out of their circle, so to speak, would have been something they wouldn't um, actually believe in. Yep. And, um, yeah. So is it possible today that we probably shut our ears from a message because of the vessel that is used yes. to de- deliver that message? Yes, we do so quite a lot. Quite a lot, and it's 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 rather unfortunate because you know, it's 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 in these broken pieces where the message, um, broken pieces, so to speak, where Christ is really spoken, and um, there is so much vigor, there is so much energy to 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 talk about what Christ has done for them, mm-hmm. and what a better way for Mary Magdalene herself, who Christ had um, removed, cast out seven demons mm-hmm. for her to proclaim. Um, the, 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 the resurrection of Christ. And let's remember even before his death, Mary as well is the same Mary that had ministered, had served Jesus, you know, breaking and, you know, giving him the, the most expensive perfume mm. and uh, which Judas had um, uh, spoken against. Yeah. So really, um, let's be careful and be aware of the blessings that we're closing off ourselves because we don't like the person that's speaking, we don't like the people that God uses um, in today's world. Yeah. yeah. Well, in the past, God has used a donkey to, to speak. To speak. Mm-hmm. Um, he, Jesus even says that mm-hmm. um, if you don't cry out, <clears throat> the rocks will cry mm-hmm. out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The rocks will, will cry out mm-hmm. and proclaim this, this, this message. So um, sometimes we look at the vessel and judge the vessel by our own um, human understanding, uh, human understanding mm-hmm. and human eyes. But mm-hmm. God has since left that place. And as you've said, the same seven demons, probably people like ah, this lady of seven who had seven demons, how could she be the first to, uh, to mm-hmm. see Christ? So I guess the message that uh, comes to us um, and to, to our viewers is that um, no, do not despise the, the prophets. Yeah. Do not despise the prophets. Test every spirit and hear what God intends exactly. to say to you through the vessel that, um, that he has sent. And maybe as we um, uh, near the close of our, our study, he then gives them the commission um, to, to go out <clears throat> into the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd like to read, I think, verse 14. Um, of uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 14 says, Afterward he appeared unto the eleven, mm-hmm. as they sat at meat. He abraded them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Mm-hmm. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And I'll end there mm. in verse, verse 16. So Jesus, um, as he appeared to, to the 11, mm. um, what did he, he? He first rebuked them, mm-hmm. um, then he gave them the commission. And uh, what does it say about um, you know the, the approach that Jesus take? What what do you uh, that Jesus took? Um, is it of any significance to us today? What lesson can we take away from there? 
So, you know, the first thing that he does is rebuke them for their unbelief. Mm. And, um, you know, and uh, one can only imagine that the same disciples had walked with Christ mm -hmm. and have heard the message all through <clears throat> his ministry, knowing that Christ will die and resurrect. Mm. But for some reason, um, they never got to understand it. And um, if we, we continue with the study in the other books, it took Thomas having to touch the hands of Christ for mm. him to physically confirm that this was the Christ. Mm. And um, it, you know, he had to diffuse that, that doubt. He had to make sure that they, they believe what they've seen and they understand it. And um, we also need to be rebuked for unbelief because how do we go out there if we are full of unbelief of who Christ is or who the Savior is of what uh, that means for us as Christians? So I, I think that we, we constantly need to, you know, to, to, to ask God to help us through our unbelief so mm. that we can trust in this God that, we, um, that we, we, we are proclaiming. And the one other thing is that there was no way they would then be sent into, a, um, into the Great Commission doing what Christ um, uh, commissioned them to do if they were sitting in that unbelief as well. Mm. So they had to believe that, Christ really did live on earth. Christ really is who he says he is. And he um, has a love and compassion for the people that he, he came to die for. Mm. So it was very important that at that point, the disciples had no doubt, absolutely none of who Christ is. Otherwise, it was going to be a difficult mission. Yeah. Mm. So in, in not so many words, what I hear mm. you say is, how can we be witnesses of that which we do not believe? True. Yeah. So Jesus rebuked the unbelief, mm -hmm. um, and then he gave them the commission. So mm -hmm. for us to be able to stand and share this gospel, we need to um, believe, believe yeah. in what uh, God has said. We need to believe in him. We need to believe his promises. Then, mm -hmm. then can we be credible witnesses of God's word? And as we bring this lesson to a close, um, any key points, any takeaways that you'd like to leave with our viewers? Um, so for me, just having gone through the whole book of Mark, um, just gaining that understanding of who Christ is. And I think that's one thing that Mark um, did when he went with Paul and Barnabas. He, he withdrew and wanted to study and know who God is. And surely through the study of Mark, we've come to a point where we realize that he is the savior. Mm. And we need to go out there and preach that same message of love a message of forgiveness, a message that Christ himself represented on earth and nothing more than what he has done for us. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time to study with us today. Um, dear viewers, I hope you've been blessed by our study today. Uh, this lesson marks the end of our current series that we're having on the book of Mark, but we will continue to have uh, more studies. We'll be shortly going into the book of John. So we invite you to continue with us as we study the word of God. But um, until then, may God keep you safe. May he keep you faithful and may he reveal himself to you. God bless.